Did I lose anything yet? No? We're still good? I still got my fancy background? All right. Let's see here. And how's that look? You guys can read that okay? Backwards? Thank you. Is that a... It's a weird thing because it's... It shows forwards for me, but not for you guys. That's weird. Let me fix that. How's that? There you go. Okay. So it looks reverse for me, but okay. Whatever. <laughs> All right. I should be looking to the right right now, to the left. Okay. Sweet. And then if I transition back to this thing, wah. Okay. Stretching. All right, I don't want to take too much of your time, but uh, how are we guys doing? Everyone doing okay? Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that works too. All right. Um, you know, that's a good question, Jason. Uh, Jason's question was, do, are they going to extend school closures? I think uh, TOSD has. Um, and I, I expect to hear from the president uh, from the... Um, I expect to hear from Mr. Richards today um, and go from that. So, uh, about school closures and stuff like that. All right. So, cool beans. Yeah, so my daughter's working on stuff right now, etc. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, this will help us a little bit. Um, this week, we're going to be talking about changing velocity, um, but I thought we'd review over the other stuff. Um, you guys, I think we're ready to go. We'll just let people join in as they go. All right, it is recording, so I'll be, I'll be able to post this later uh, and also post the slides. Um, in fact, I can probably do that right now. Why don't I go, go ahead and take care of that? You guys can watch me do that really quick. I'm posting this to you guys right now. So you can kind of look at it if you'd like to. It, won't make sense by itself because there's a lot of stuff left out because I'll be talking about it rather than that. I'm going to call it this week's. One thing I am going to be changing is I'm going to be changing how um, how often I post. I'll be asking for you guys to check in daily, but you'll have assignments that will take, like you'll have assignments for the week. And that way you don't have to come back every day. You just have to check in with me and see how you're doing and show progress. I have to take attendance somehow, so I'm going to work that out with probably little um, little formatives or something like that. And then I have one major or two major assignments a week or something like that. Just we'll figure it out. So that's been posted. All right. And let me see if I can... Present from the beginning. Shabow. And of course, it didn't do what I wanted it to do. I wanted it to present with presenter view. There we go. So I'm a little nervous, as you can tell, and I don't want to waste your time, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I think we need an intro. How was that? That was pretty cool, right? Okay, so anyway, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. Uh, we're going to be looking at changing velocity. So the first thing we need to do is um, everyone can see right above me it says live, right? Okay, good. All right, so let's talk about constant velocity. 
Uh, and you guys can answer this question. What did we see change? What was changing so for this last thing? What were we seeing change at a constant rate? You can say it, or you can also post it, whichever you guys want to do. I know it's going to be a little weird. What property were we looking at in time? <laughs> what property do we see change? Um, <laughs> All right, we're getting a few people saying position. That's right. Okay, so um, part of that is. Let's see. Very good. All right. The location of an object relative to some point in space. Here's our object. There's our relative position. At time zero, for example, this is three meters over to the right and two meters up. Makes sense so far? And we would see that change at a constant pace. OK. I think we do. Yo, who, who's going on? Going on? <laughs> it's like, it's a, like class. a class. Yeah. It's recording uh, your voices and everything, too. So make sure if you're just going to uh, watch, then make sure you put it on mute. Because it is catching everyone's voices. All right. What does a constant velocity look like in a motion map? Now, we really didn't get to talk about motion maps too much. But essentially, we have a number line. And then we have the object moving across. You guys see, what does the spacing look like for a constant velocity? It, yeah, it moves in a straight and equal spacing. Very good. So that's kind of what we want to make sure we understand. That's a motion map for something that's moving at a constant pace. All right. Cool. So another gra uh, way to look at it is through graphs. The first graph that we saw was the position time graph. That looked like a straight line. Some of you had said that earlier. So you have a straight line that uh, says that the position is changing at a constant pace. And we call that position change velocity. Now the neat thing is we can look at another graph, the velocity time graph. And we saw that the velocity time graph, since it didn't change, would just be a flat line. So this shows that the velocity was 5 meters a second every second. All right. So what I want to do is take a look at um, some of this stuff and see what else we can tell from the velocity time graph. Let me get to my iPad here. For some reason, this isn't working just yet, but just give me a second here. Let's view <laughs> one of those. There it is. OK. And awesome. Hit OK. And then we're going to go to that. Take off the color key and all that fun stuff. Perfect. Oops. No, we want that crop. There we go. All right. So I have here on my iPad. Um, graphical analysis and I'm going to go ahead and open up one of the things that we are looking at. Um, 
we have a position time graph on the top there and a velocity time graph on the bottom. Uh, pretty much the same one you saw just recently. So let me ask you this. If something's going 5 meters a second for 5 seconds, how far is it going to go? That's, 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 that's going to go 25, 25 meters. meters. Exactly. It's going to go 25 meters. And if we look at the velocity time graph, what I, what I can do is calculate the area of this shape here because we did 5 is the height there and 5 is the width. We multiply 5 seconds by 5 meters per second. We end up with 25 meters. So that's pretty cool. That means that if we have a velocity time graph, we can find the area between the line and the axes and figure out how far it's traveled. All right, we're having some issues with audio there. Let me see if I can do that. It's going to be a little buggy today. So the area of this rectangle, for example, the, the base is two meters, uh, sorry, two seconds, and the height is five meters per second. So this shows a change of 10 meters. So if we were to start from zero, we could actually figure out how far it's traveled from some certain position. So let's say if we started all the way at zero and went to one second, we can grab that. I can see that it's traveled five meters from where it started. Now, if we know where it started, then we can actually tell its position. At zero, at zero, zero, it's at zero meters and it moves in one second it has moved five meters. And we can do that over and over again. We're going to use this technique in our lab this week to figure out how far something is going and, and understand how it's changing velocity, that kind of stuff. So, so there's that, right? Um, let's take a look at my desktop again. So the big idea here is that we can take the velocity time graph and find the area of it. And that gives us the change in position. It doesn't tell us where the object is. It only tells us how far it's changed its position. Uh, we call that change in position displacement. So if you see that displacement word out there, it just means we're taking one position and another position and subtracting the two. But also we can find the area. All right. Um, oh, good point. Uh, because we're doing this through Meets uh, on Google, if you uh, thanks for that. If you want to pin uh, my presentation up, you can do that. Since I'm not presenting my screen, I'm actually using a, a streaming app to do this through my camera. Uh, it just looks like a regular camera, so you'll have to pin it. That's something I just learned right now, so thank you for that. Um, just click on my image and it will pin me to the middle. That way you don't have to keep seeing random people. And you don't need your uh, video. You can turn your video off. It'll it'll uh, lighten up the load for everyone as well. So um, that might be a good idea. Anyway, um, so I thought we'd do some quick practice uh, and you guys can uh, text in your response or you can um, uh, chat in your response or you can uh, go from just take everything's loading all right let me see here oh my gosh all right so I'm gonna switch over to this guy here if we have a velocity time graph right for constant velocity it's just gonna be a flat line all right Let's say that line is at a velocity of 25 meters per second. So if we go for 10 seconds, how much displacement is there going to be? Visually, remember, we can take the area of the shape. And if you're wondering what that means, that's 
essentially going to look like this region right here in between the axis all right in between the axis and the um, the uh, velocity time curve there so in between this line and this axis here we're going to multiply those two numbers we're going to multiply the height times the width so the height is 25 meters per second and the width is 10 seconds so we're going to multiply those two numbers what do we end up getting 250 250 and if we look at the units meters per second times seconds the seconds cancel out and we get 250 meters so that means we can take any velocity time graph and do that so the one that we have trouble with is maybe negative velocity so if I have a velocity time graph there's my t there's my velocity uh, axis let's say we have a velocity that is negative and then suddenly it's positive and let's say that the positive is 5 meters per second and the negative is 5 meters per second that way and let's say this goes for 4 seconds and this happens at 2 seconds so if we started let's say we started somewhere along the axis let's make it not 0 let's make it 2 meters so notice the two meters is not the information that we have on the velocity time graph. All right. So we can tell how far it's going to move from there, but we won't be able to tell how um, where it is until we actually include that two meter part. All right. So first question is where does it end up after two seconds? There's two part question to that. The first thing is figure out how far does it travel. And then the second part is add that to two meters and we'll go from there. So how far does it travel in the first two seconds? Negative five meters per second means it's going to the left five meters per second for two seconds. How far does it go? Negative 10 meters. Ten. Awesome. Yeah, negative 10. And so that's not where it's at. That says meters, I promise. It's not, oh my goodness, I can't. I just can't. <laughs> I gotta remember to be a little goofy here. Negative 10 meters, I promise, that says negative 10 meters. So that means that we're gonna go negative 10 meters from where we started, so where on the number line do we end up? That's 10 meters away from two. Negative eight meters. Yeah, yeah. yeah, cool. So that being said, we can, the velocity time graph, remember, doesn't tell us where we are. We have to have that initial position there. We have to know what, uh, where we started. You know, most of the time, if we don't know, we can just say we started at zero and we can always add at the very end. From where the thing started, it's ending up two meters away or it's ending up 10 meters away to the left. We can do that kind of stuff. Now the next two seconds, it travels with a positive velocity of five meters per second. All right. So again, five meters per second for two seconds. Ten, ten. ten meters. But this time we're going positive ten because the line is above the zero axis. So it's a positive area. All right. Whenever we talk about areas on a graph, a lot of students think they have to shade this whole thing below the below. And it's it's really important to remember the physics of it, not just the we're shading stuff. The physics is like the question, what the physics? What the physics is is showing us that if it's not moving, it's not going to have an area. So if it is moving, it's going to have an area. And that area is going to be confined between the red line, the axis and whatever the velocity is. All right. Cool. So if we went another 10 meters, but this time we went the other way, we're back where we started. So my overall displacement would be zero. 
And that would mean that if I added these two areas together, if I added these two areas together, you'd get zero. Does that make sense so far? Does anyone have any questions? No, no. All right, let's try another um, velocity curve. Now let's just say that my velocity time graph kind of looks like this. And those are supposed to be dotted lines, but let me see if I can do that. I just wanted to make sure they lined up. Uh, and let's move this one down a little bit. Okay, we're gonna move the whole thing down. All right, that's interesting. Let's say that's this is one, this is two, this is three. And this is velocity in meters per second. And this is time. All right. What's the uh, total displacement? Let's say this is six seconds total. This is four seconds here. And this is two seconds. So what would be the total displacement for this thing that's slowing down? Someone says 18. How would you find that? Okay. So if it continued, good, I'm glad you did that. If it continued going at three meters per second for the whole time, then yes, you would be right, three meters per second times six seconds gives you 18 meters. But you can see that it doesn't continue going at three meters per second. It stops, uh, suddenly it's now going two meters per second. Sorry, it doesn't stop. It would have a velocity of zero. So it's gonna be less than 18. Oh, good, yeah, let's break it down. Good, yeah, so the first part is gonna be six meters. Let me change my color here so we can kind of see if that makes sense. I'll go with yellow. So this part right here, that's worth uh, six meters. Someone said that. Okay, okay. Those are awful colors. Can you guys see that okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So what's the next part worth? Now, this is really hard, too, because we want to be able to see, like, um, it's going two meters per second for how many seconds, though? Yeah, it's this it's this right here is only two seconds. So two seconds, two meters per second? Yeah, four meters. All right, so we know. Yeah, go ahead, the last one's gonna be? Two, two. Awesome. So what's the total displacement? I just add those all up. 12, 12 meters. Yeah, okay. So the actual answer is 12 meters, very good. What would be the average pace? I went 12 meters in six seconds. So what's my average velocity? Uh, six, six. Yeah. No, oh, wait, hang on a second. In six seconds, what's my average velocity? It would be two. two. Yeah, two meters per second. Yeah, yeah. Notice that if I were to, um, let's see if I can fix this really quick here. Notice that area is worth 12, right? And that I could find another area that's also worth 12. It's an easier area, it's a rectangle. That's I can just multiply two times six and I got my 12. Well, it's like I took this little piece right here and I plugged it in right there. Okay. So kind of cool uh, that the average works out to be two. Let's try a different one. What if my velocity graph looked like this? Let's say it's going to go 20 meters per second at the end, and it's going for 10 seconds. All right. Uh, 
Yeah, it's a, well, some, someone said it's a triangle, and what'd you say? Okay, good. Well, I multiply 20 times 10. It's just like the last time where we said 3 times 6 was 18. We're going to see um, we're going to see that that would be this rectangle here. But that our velocity time graph is a straight line, which means that we have a constantly changing velocity. So we're not going 20 meters per second until the very end. So we can't cover 200 meters. It's going to be uh, less than that. So someone mentioned that don't we just have to find the area of that rectangle? I'm oh, sorry, of this triangle. Do you guys remember that equation? I know some of you have already typed it in. Remember. Yeah, base times height, and then what do we have to do to it? Uh, that would give me, yeah, okay, so it'll take us half that rectangle. Yeah, exactly, base times height time divided by two. What we're doing is we're going to, um, remember this is the velocity time graph, because when we multiply speed times time, we get a distance. Same idea with velocity is meters per second, and time is seconds. We multiply those two quantities, we get meters, for that. So it works out that this is the actual displacement. So 20 meters per second times 10 seconds. Units cancel out. We get 200. But then we have to divide by 2. We get 100 meters. So that means this thing traveled 100 meters in 10 seconds. How are we doing with that? Good, good. Good, good. Okay. So Another cool thing is we could slice this right in half and take this little triangle right here and put it over here and we get the same area. We could get the same area if we had a constant velocity of what? 10 meters for 10 seconds. 100 meters for 10 seconds. Sorry, I gave you the answer. Yep, 10 meters per second. So that my average velocity is 10 meters per second, which is halfway. All right, let me clear up my graph again here. Sound effects help, right? Is that as far as I can go? There it is, okay. Cleaned it up. So we found out the average velocity was exactly halfway between the two points between this between those two points there. It was going zero at the beginning, now it's going twenty. Halfway between at five seconds, it's going ten meters a second. So we could use that average velocity technique to help us with something else too. So that brings us to something that's kind of new. We're gonna, we looked at changing position at a constant pace. Let's look at changing velocity. So we're going to look at how velocity changes, which means we're going to see the speed primarily change, not so much the direction. The direction will be going forward or backwards or left or right. Um, but we're not going to be taking a left turn or a right turn. We're just going to stay in a straight line. So. Um, we're going to see the velocity of the object change over time. All right. So the first thing we saw was the velocity time graph. And that's kind of what we just saw here, that in 10 seconds, it's going 20 meters per second at the end. So that's kind of what that uh, ends up looking like. All right. So. What does that mean as far as, I mean, what can we do with that? We can use the same technique that we were showing before uh, to uh, figure out what the graph of position time looks like. If I can pull it up, pardon me. 
change in velocity. Yes. Okay. So here is that same graph in graphical analysis. Let me make it a little bit easier for you guys to see here. All right. Same graph. It changes from 0 meters per second to uh, 20 meters per second in 10 seconds. What's the slope of that line, by the way? How much is it changing every second? Yeah, it's kind of hard because the grids don't line up real nice. But let's take a look at, uh, at zero. It's going zero meters per second. After 10 seconds, it's going 20. So the total change was 20 meters per second, and that took 10 seconds. So how much is it changing every second? Twenty meters per second divided by ten is two meters per second every second. So the units are going to kind of look a little weird on that. So what we did was the change in velocity over the change in time is what we just did. We said it was twenty meters per second minus zero meters per second, and we said it took ten seconds, and it started at zero seconds we end up with two meters per second per second. Yay, units. The thing is, those seconds can't cancel because it's not this, right? It's not, we're not dividing by seconds and seconds. We're dividing meters per second by seconds. So that's actually going to look like this wonderful thing. Dividing by a fraction is multiplying by its reciprocal. So we end up with 2 meters per second squared. Now, usually people have a hang up with that. You have to kind of be careful not to accidentally cross out seconds. When you're dividing velocity by time, the seconds end up getting squared. Is that weird? Or are we OK with that? Okay. okay. Like I said, it's going to be a little weird, but um, as long as we can see, like, when we divide it, it automatically becomes meters per second every second. If we say it that way, it's changing two meters a second every second. So that means after two seconds, it's going to be going four meters per second. After three seconds, it's going to be going six meters per second, and so on. And of course, every time I load graphical analysis, it says, oh, you wanted to work on something? So my question for you guys is, what do you think the position time graph would look like? Let's say this object started at zero position. What would that look like? Would it go straight? Wait, wait. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one, right? Like, um, before, when it was a straight line, it was our velocity graph was a flat line. Now our velocity time graph is a straight line. Our position time graph is not going to be a straight line anymore. It can't be. It's changing its position more and more. What do you guys think? Here's position, and here's time. It starts at zero. If it was going at a constant pace, it would make it. Now, we already know, since uh, we did the math earlier, something that's going 20 meters per second after 10 seconds will have traveled 100 meters. So it made it to 100 meters in 10 seconds. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go back, and you can follow along with graphical analysis if you'd like. But essentially, I'm going to find the area of this graph 
Gotta love it. Do, do, do. I'm going to find the area of this graph for every second from zero. So you can follow along by typing in the data. There's my, my whole area. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me see if I can make that better. There we go. It says my area is 100 meters per second times seconds. The seconds cancel. That's 100 meters. An integral is a fancy way of saying area. So if I were to look at every second, you could do the math yourself. I know how fast it's going after one second since we know the rate. The rate is two meters a second. So after one second, it's going two meters per second, one half base times height, one second times two divided by two, we end up with one. So I'm going to um, add another set of data here. You guys can just start off with a manual column of position and another column of time. And I managed to mess that up. Let's see, position. In meters. All right, and we are defining the first position to be zero. After one second, we said it's gone one meter. Okay. So now if I look at my uh, graph and table, I'm going to look at two seconds. So I can pull that up over there. After two seconds, the base is two, the height is four, one half base times height. We end up with a total of four meters. So we're now four meters from our beginning point. So our position is now four at time two. Time three. Our area is now three times six divided by two, nine. Where am I getting these numbers? I can look at inspection. I see that I'm going six meters per second at time three. From time zero to time three is three seconds. And my height of the triangle is six. So three times six is 18. But that's the whole rectangle. I need half of that. That becomes nine. All right. This is what you're going to be doing in the pivot lab to create your position time graph. Um, from the, uh, you're going to see that this is going to be happening from your position time graph uh, in the pivot coming up. All right, and so on. Does anyone? Can anyone see what the next number would be? We have a pattern here. The third second it's nine. The second second it's four. The first second it was one. This one's going to be 16, the fourth second. The fifth second, yep. The fifth second. What, what is this sequence of numbers? Yeah. How is 5 and 25 related the same way as 4 and 16? Okay, multiplying by the same number, that means we're, we're squaring. So it just so happens that that's my pattern of I'm looking at the sequence of squares. So six is gonna be 36. We can, just, oh, no. we can double check that right here. Looking at my area, there it is, at six seconds, it's 36. Now remember, we're taking the, dis, the change in position from the beginning point. That one's gonna be 49. Okay, that one's going to be 64, that one's going to be 81, and the last one's going to be 100. Didn't we say we ended up at 100 meters after 10 seconds? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what does that mean our position time graph is going to look like? Let's get that. 
Yeah, it's curving. Does anyone recognize that curve while I change this to 100 here? What is that? Okay, I am hearing parabola and quadratic. Correct, it is not exponential. Um, exponential means that it would uh, double every single time, and it's not. It's going up. Um, uh, it's changing at a consistent rate. Uh, exponential would be changing at a at a higher and higher rate, and so that would look even steeper of a change. But yeah, it's a parabola. So if we do a curve fit, a linear doesn't help us here. We actually have to go to a quadratic. And if I hit apply. I notice my quadratic, I have these crazy numbers for everything else. Let me see if I can zoom those numbers in for you so you can kind of see those. A is like perfect, B is like crazy, and so is C. But if we look at it, B is times 10 to the negative 17th. Yeah, that's pretty much zero. Uh, C is to the negative 16th. Our positions were on the order of 100 meters, not 10 to the negative 16th meters, there was no way. So B and C are practically zero. And where, what is A, B, and C? It's the quadratic formula, AX squared plus BX plus C. So A is the coefficient of the X squared term. B and C are both basically zero. So our equation is just position equals some number that's one times time squared. position is equal to 1, we've got to figure out what the units are, times time squared. Okay, in order to get position, I need meters on this side, but I have time squared, so I have to divide by time squared, which is units of second squared, and so this has the same units as our slope of the velocity time graph did. So now if we can try it out, we can try a number like, I don't know, at time uh, 2, I plug it in there, I get 4 seconds times 1 meter, oh, 4 seconds squared times one meter per second squared. The second squared cancels. I get four times one meter is four meters. So that's where it's going to be at two seconds. All right, so we can plug in any number into T. This is because we started at a position of zero meters. If we started anywhere else, then the graph would just shift wherever else that goes. That's what C does on the quadratic formula. It tells us our initial position. We'll stop there because I've, we kind of reviewed um, velocity. We kind of we also reviewed um, uh, some concepts about constant velocity. Then we looked at what if velocity changed at a constant rate. And we're going to see that in our next item here. Um, there is one more thing I want to show you how to do. It's going to ask you to how to do it on pivot. Rather than you doing, you can do a curve fit, that's fine. But I, the whole point is to look at something that's going down a hill. You're going to be tracking its position. Um, once I have that up, that'll be due uh, by Friday, so you have plenty of time to work that out. I'll have some little formatives along the way. Um, but. I'm going to take a step back a little bit. I've been pushing hard on you guys, and I really appreciate you trying. Um, and uh, the last thing I want to show you is that we want to go from this graph to a velocity time graph. There's kind of a cool thing we can do um, based on what we learned just, just a second ago. So uh, let me uh, take a moment to do that. Let's just say that I have a, um, 
I want to be able to use my equation. I'm going to come up with a position time graph. Oh, let's say it's called, we're going to take four. Uh, this will be called position, excuse me. And we're just going to, um, we're going to make it uh, four meters per second squared times um, time squared. And I'm going to change my x-axis to time. I forgot to do that, sorry. In seconds. Oh my gosh. Typing with Mr. Kiros. Hallelujah. All right, apply. Okay, and over here, I'm going to have uh, position. And I just have to put in some times now. Zero. One, two, three, four. Let's not go crazy. Let's go five seconds. All right, you can see my position time graph. If I do my quadratic fit, quadratic it fits perfectly because I entered an equation to make it happen, right? So let's say I want to make a velocity time graph from this. So we, we went backwards. We did the area of the velocity time graph to figure out where each position was changing. And then uh, we made our position time graph. We can do it backwards too. So in this case, it makes it, let me make my presentation a little bigger for you and get rid of uh, the data. Let me uh, take a look at graph options, make it lines. Can you guys see where it ends up after five seconds? Yeah, it's at 100 meters after five seconds. What can we calculate from that? Oh, that that just means I just lost my, oh, whew, almost lost my graph there. Always save. OK. So. 100 meters in five seconds. What's my average pace? Twenty meters a second. Thank you. Yeah, 100 meters. But this time we're doing it in five seconds, right? We basically connected the top two points of that position time graph. Kind of looked like a bow and arrow there, but essentially we said, hey, we went 10, 100 meters in five seconds. That's 20 meters per second on average for the whole time. OK. What happens if we go back to that graph, I hope? Nope. OK. Graphical analysis does some weird stuff to me. What if we were to take? Um, the position at one second. The position at one second is four, and the position at four seconds is 64. So 64 minus four? 60. OK. Yeah. Four minus one? Three. Okay, so 60 meters in three seconds. What's my average pace? I'm sorry, I'm kind of like waving my hands, but if you're if you're writing it down, so 60 meters in three seconds was 20 meters a second. Okay, yeah. what about two and three? So notice I'm kind of going towards the middle of the graph. We said that the average velocity was the actual velocity halfway between the time. So halfway between 5 is 2.5. I'm kind of centering around 2.5. So I'm going to go from 2 to 3. See how it's still centered on 2.5? Mm -hmm. 30, 36 minus 16. 20. 20. And 3 minus 2 is 1. 20 meters per second again. So we found that the slope was the same for, if I just chose these two points, 100 and 0, 1 and 4, 
2 and 3. So my question is, what do you think the slope is at 2.5? In other words, we don't have a we don't have two points. We can't do a slope, but we can say what do you think the velocity is at 2.5 seconds? Mm -hmm. 20. Mm -hmm. So that means we can um, we know that it's going 20 meters a second at 2.5 seconds. That's halfway between the times. So let me see if I get my table back up again. This is going to be velocity. And uh, in meters per second. And so at 2.5 seconds, the velocity is going to be 20 meters per second. Now, something else is if we look at the position time graph again, it looks very flat. And at the beginning here, um, let me see. This is adding a bunch of stuff. So let me. Um, I appreciate you guys hanging in there, and I know it's it's kind of a long thing, but uh, this is pretty much it for you today. Those of you who, uh, here, uh, we'll call it good. But uh, the idea is, now that I've added that, I can have two graphs where I have velocity down here and time, and um, I'm going to see that my bottom is there oh i'm guessing if that i'm like right in the middle right now there's my one velocity woohoo okay so that means we can take any two points on the position time graph find out what the average velocity would be for that interval and then we end up just um we find out what the velocity is halfway between. So, for example, the velocity at 1 will be the same thing as a slope of 0 to 2. So, it's 16 meters. Oh my goodness. Hashtag skills. So, at 16 meters, <laughs> uh, 16 meters, it was 0 meters at the beginning, so 0 to 16 is 16 meters of change and it took two seconds to do that so my average pace for that time interval was eight that means that was my velocity halfway halfway was one so my velocity at time one is eight i keep switching when i don't mean to all right I can find the velocity at time three. I can choose two and four. Notice they're one second on each side of time three. So I just connect two and four together with a straight line and find the velocity. This one's gonna be a little tougher. 64 minus 16. Okay, we'll go with that. And it took two seconds to do that, so what does this change? Forty eight divided by two? Twenty four at time three. So I'll have this kind of reminded you a little bit about how that's going to happen on the I'll remind you guys how to do this on the um, pivot as well but I just wanted to show you that we're able to find the um, velocity now I just have three points here um, and my graph decided to leave on me hold on a second so I got to set up everything let me go back to just one graph and just do velocity here and include zero And my top, I th think it was around 40. Whoops. I must have hit 240. 
Do you guys see my straight line coming out? Yeah. Yeah. What's the slope of that line so far? Let's go ahead and do a linear fit. How much is the velocity changing every second? Eight meters a second every second. Mm -hmm. So now, once I once I understand that, I can keep doing the same thing to get more data points. But once I have the actual velocity time graph, I now have a simpler graph to to look at. Like looking at the position time graph, um, that's that's hard to um, analyze because it's a square graph and it, it's curving but the constant velocity graph is a uh, constant changing velocity graph the straight line graph is easier to um, to say hey I know what the slope is it's going to be the same this is changing its velocity the same amount every second so my last thing is what do we call that change in velocity every second that's how much the position is changing what, what, what? if we're changing our in other words in this case this is speeding up because it's going zero meters per second and now it's going um, at the end it's going 40 meters per second so it's speeding up what do we call speeding up yeah accelerating exactly so Accelerating in physics means speeding up or slowing down or changing direction, all those things. So we don't say decelerate or accelerate. We say it accelerates, and then we can say whether it's speeding up or slowing down based on what the object's doing. In this case, it was going zero meters per second at the beginning, and then 40 meters per second later. So we say, yep, it was speeding up. Even if it was going the other direction, let's say it was, it was going zero and it was going the other direction, so negative 40 meters per second, it went from 0 to 40 uh, still, it was changing in velocity, and so we could say it was speeding up, even though the graph would end up going down. So it's one of those fun things. We'll see some um, formatives and stuff online a little bit later. Um, questions? I know there was a lot. I think, uh, I think we want to call this one done. You guys were hanging out for 50 some odd minutes, so that's, that's more than a class period. And I'm going to call that. You guys are good to go for physics today. Just uh, uh, send me a... Uh, I'll put a little thing to Mark Dunn or whatever that you were here. Um, I don't know. I'm figuring it out. I'll put a question out. There we go. One question. And it won't take an hour, I promise. Like my last ones. Let me see. I'm going to switch over to my camera. There we go. And... Yeah, you bet. My pleasure. Have a good one, Tom. All right. Looks like it's time to... All right, that was awesome. Anyone have any questions before I leave? So are we going to go, go now? Then, then, then. Yeah, I'm going to put something online for you guys uh, for you to finish. Uh, it would be like a, a single formative question or something. I haven't. I've been dealing with technical issues. I haven't been able to get, get my stuff up online for you guys. But I'm going to try to put everything up for you uh, for through, for the entire week. Okay. Okay. So we just so do this, this formative for today, today and, then, and, then, and then that's it? Yeah, there's gonna, yeah, and I'll, I'll be posting a pivot and all that stuff, so you can take a look at it, but as far as attendance today, um, I, I don't know how to keep track of who was here on the, on the live session. I would just say you're, you're here, but um, I'm going to have like a single basic question for you to answer for today. All right, then. All right. Then. All right. It'll be based on this video, so if you didn't watch the video, you'll have to watch the, um, the recap. All right. Thanks, Arturo. It's good to hear your voice. All right. All right. Glad, Glad to, talk to talk to you, too. You too. All have right. Good day. Good day. You as well. Thank you, guys. I hope it was enjoyable, or I hope I didn't go 
crazy. You have questions for me, Michelle? Okay. Yeah, I'm all good. I'm gonna I'm gonna create that uh, Go formative now and, and have that sent. It'll be based on this video, so hopefully um, I'll have it the a recording posted for you guys so you can kind of review it. All right. Thanks so much. I hope it was fun. Thank you.